everyone and welcome back to my channel or my Instagram depending on where you're watching. Uh, today I'm going to read to you chapter 2 of Alina the Witch. Um, parts 1 and 2 of chapter 1 are available on my YouTube but only part 1 is available on Instagram. I can't remember why that was but I will look at fixing that. Um, a brief overview if you haven't seen it although it would make a lot more sense if you have. Um, Alina the Witch is it's more it is still teen fiction, but I would say more early teen fiction, um, kind of between the ages of nine to twelve. Uh, and the story just follows the life of Alina, who lives in a family of witches, a uh, coven of witches, and she attends a normal school, but she herself is a witch. Um, she just wants to blend in, but her family are not allowing that to happen. And chapter two begins. Um, following a conversation from chapter one of all of the Crofts, all of the witch family sat around the table and Alina's best friend Jamie has just turned up and has joined in the conversation. So basically we want to know why they are moving here of all places and if they are going to give us any grief. Really Sabrina, this is a task the guild can take care of. We already have a fully functioning common locally for this purpose. We don't need to be involved, please. Putting her hands together as if to pray, Hetty let her wild chocolate curls fall into her tea. Tell them Delia, you must agree. This would be where the average person would share their honest view, but Delia Croft struggled to do that when under pressure. Her dark eyes glossed over briefly, taking in all the people seated around the old oak table, weighing up how much her honesty would disappoint those she loved. Delia had porcelain skin, radiating like the moon beneath her long black hair. She often wore half of it up in a braid. Alina wondered where her mother inherited such well-behaved hair from. Perhaps she had shown so much restraint over the years that even her locks submitted to the wants of others. I mean, it couldn't hurt to be cautious. Oh! Rolling her eyes, Hetty removed her hair from the mug. There, it's settled then. Sabrina couldn't look more delighted if she tried. Stick the kettle back on, Dorian. It wasn't a question but a demand. Elena had almost forgotten Dorian was there. Yep, he grinned, rising without hesitation. Eyeing Dorian suspiciously, Jamie looked as if he may ask a question before thinking better of it. Perhaps he wondered if Elena would do that to him one day if he found a better friend. Don't you think we're in enough trouble? Hetty tried to reason with Granny, which was always a mistake. Exactly, we're in, already in trouble. It can't get worse. Granny! Elena yelled. What if they came here for Aidan? With their family history, Delia bit her lip. Isn't Aidan your uncle? Jamie looked mildly confused, as if this were merely a plot twist in a story that he was underwhelmed with. Yes, yeah, sort of. Dorian is taking a long time to turn the kettle on, isn't he? He's fine, Ali. You know, it take, you know everything takes him ages with his uh, state of mind. No one is getting Aidan now, Sabrina shrugged. How can you be sure? Hetty looked as if she was on the verge of a panic attack. Alina could feel her own hair standing on end. They didn't often discuss Aid Alina's demon uncle, but when they did, it never ended well. He's in the book! Sabrina, Sabrina put so much emphasis on the word book that she almost screamed it. Leaning in, Jamie looked interested once more. What book? Who is Aidan? Really, Jamie, it's not a big deal, Alina sighed. Not a big deal, Hetty squeaked. Granny only birthed the demon who caused nothing but chaos and couldn't be cured, so we trapped him in a lab, except that only works with genies. Then Sabrina here falls in love with a chef who's the only man alive to not want her back, so she made a love potion so powerful she pretty much breaks his entire brain, so that the first thing he does with the lamp is clean it. Then Aiden gets loose and attacks loads of people. We nearly don't get him back in the book we created because Delia falls in love with Buff the freaking Demon Slayer and Helga's yelp followed by aggressive hissing cut Hetty off. Otis, Delia's familiar, had bitten her tail. That's enough! Granny sl silenced them all. Witches, humans and familiars. Everyone bars in the glorious sound of nothing for a few heartbeats. A rare treat under the thatched roof. Where did you get that? Sabrina leapt up, sending her own familiar Iggy flying off her lap. The grace of things ha cat hissed before disappearing under the table, snapping her head round to see the sudden change in what the sudden change in mood was all about. Alina's own heart skipped to beat at the sight in the doorway. You asked for the book. Dorian had had the permanent expression of someone who had just woken up. It was hard to imagine what he was like before he met Sabrina. He had dark blonde curls tucked neatly behind his elvish ears. His sharp features softened by the warmth in his cheeks. The large black book in his hands looked very out of place, with its red pent pentagram glow gleaming under the fluorescent glow of the hall light. Have I upset you? No, no, it's fine, just put it on the table. If you ever find the book, give it to me. Remember that, Dorian. 
Seeing Sabrina so unsure was chilling. Alina pulled her cardigan tighter and shrunk into her chair. Stealing a glance at Jamie, she prayed he would still be her friend after this. Having witches for family was one thing, but a demon uncle trapped in a book, that would be a step too far for most. Can me and Jamie be excused now? Oh what? It's fine, Ellie, I don't mind, Jamie whispered, piercing her eyes with his pale blue orbs. You don't have to be polite, she pleaded in response. The book is here, it's okay, no one has to panic. Sabrina looked quite the opposite as someone who was not panicking, an expression that was completely foreign in such a confident face. Silence fell once more while the witches caught their breath. Chewing her lip, Granny stared at the book. Hetty stared everywhere but the book. Delia focused on Alina, who was trying to decide whether Jamie secretly wanted to leave but was too shy to say. He stared at the book with an expression that could, she could not possibly read. Dorian looked confused as always. Then Sabrina began to laugh. What now? Hetty snapped. Did you really call Alina's dad Buff the Demon Slayer? Please, Delia almost sobbed. Let's change the subject. That was the most Alina had ever heard about her father. She was unsure how she should feel. Confused? Intrigued? She felt tired. What can we even do before the Huttons get here? Iggy sulked. The Savinx cat often relished in disagreements, but it seemed even he was weary of the debate. Aiden's presence was draining, even if he was in a book. All we can do is wait. Put him away, Sabrina. Granny did not need to say Aiden's name for Sabrina to know exactly what she meant. So it's obviously like a little bit shorter that one. Um, chapter one's not very long either. The chapters I think are going to be a lot shorter than Turning of the Tides because it's just a different style of book. But yeah, let me know what you think. Um, comment below a witchy emoji, whatever that means for you in the comments. Uh, obviously it helps my engagement a lot when people do that. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. Have a listen to Turning of the Tides again if you need to and um, I am obviously at the end of the week I'm going to be posting a poll so you can choose which one you prefer between the two projects and whichever one gets the most votes I will carry that one through to completion. Um, obviously I will do all of them hopefully in time but right now I just don't know which one to start with. I like them both. I don't know. I'm so confused. Help me out. <laughs> bye bye everyone.